Hey Monarch, now I don't know about you, but for the past seven or eight weeks that we've been in quarantine, most of the time that I haven't been doing schoolwork has been spent doing pretty much nothing. So I decided I was going to do something that was maybe a little bit useful with that extra time I had. I looked into the wonderful state we live in, and I found some really interesting stuff. I looked at the history, and I looked at some legends and lore that have come out of our state. Now every place you go has its own local legends and lore and mysteries to solve, but Colorado definitely has some of the best. From a mysterious face to a vampire, Colorado seems to have it all. And with such a colorful history, it's easy to see where these legends have come from. Some of them are more rooted in actual fact and truth than others, but are legends nonetheless. I'd like to share a couple of those legends with you today. To start off, we'll go to Central City known for its casinos and 19th century mining era buildings, and a mysterious painting that has baffled people for years. On the floor of the Teller House restaurant, which was formerly a hotel, there's a painting. The lady with the sidelong glance, or just the mysterious face on the barroom floor, whatever you wish to call it, it's a mystery nonetheless. But where the painting came from, well that's where the legends come in. Some people say it was done by a man who as soon as he finished fell over dead. Others say it was some random guy inspired by a poem he read. But to really understand where the painting came from, we'll need to look a little more at Central City's history. Now, Central City was a glorious boom town in the mining days. But as soon as the mine gave out, so did the rest of the town, leaving it pretty much a ghost town by 1920. Now, a couple people decided they wanted to try and save their town, so they hired artist Herton Davis to paint a couple of murals of the town in its prime. Now, Ann Evans, who was the director of the project, not only hated Davis, but also hated his style. It's unclear in the end whether Davis quit or was fired, but either way, he was prompted to paint the face on the floor. On his last night in Central City, Davis convinced the bellboy Jimmy Libby to help him with his plan. Libby snuck Davis in that night through a window and held a candle for Davis as he painted. It was 3 a.m. when Davis was finished and fled town. So it's no surprise when the people woke up the next morning to a mysterious painting that they started making up stories about it. Now, years later, Davis would return to the hotel and sign the painting but the signature was later removed by management in order to keep it a mystery. But just who was the mysterious woman? Is it just some random lady, or is there an inspiration behind it? Well, kind of both. Davis would later confirm that the lady pictured in the painting was in fact his wife. He never told anybody because she wasn't too keen on the idea that her face had been painted on the floor. Today, the mysterious painting on the barroom floor remains on the barroom floor, but is now protected with a frame and a case. The next legend has a bit more of a supernatural twist to it. So we'll go down to the Lafayette Cemetery where supposedly there's a vampire buried. Now we don't know much about the man in the grave. The headstone states that one Fodor Glava, or Theodore Glava, born in Transylvania and died in 1918 is buried there. But there's actually two people in the grave, to save space no doubt. Both men were immigrants and their families still back in Europe, who died from whatever disease was running rampant at the time. So which of the men is the vampire, we may never know. Either way, the tree in the center of the grave is said to be sprouted from the stake in the vampire's heart, and the rose bushes that grow wildly around it are said to be the vampire's fingernails still growing even after death. There are reports of strange lights that float around the gravestone, apparitions that appear, visitors attacked by an unseen force, and strange voices. These accounts only add to the mystery. But the headstone is old and worn and barely readable, and any other information found is jumbled and confusing. So whether or not a vampire actually is buried in the grave, or just some men who came looking for a better life, will remain a mystery. Now, legends are coulda happened stories. With a bit of actual fact and some larger than life elements, they seem believable. Now, every place has myths, but Colorado is where legends are made. For KYOT, I'm Alex Newman.